<clears throat> Alright, Shalom. This is Ahara One, Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kal Halayim, Le Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Kodash, Ma Maf. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Aguatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is another update um, dealing with the spirit, um, prophecy, current events. You know, uh, World War Three, the sound of battle is in the land, right? Um, we still got a lot of prophecies that got to play out first. A few more prophecies, like uh, martial law, famine, economic crash, um, America put into darkness, and ultimately the um, and the race wars and the MOTB, and then. The judgment for that MOTB would be uh, the judgment of fire from the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as prophesied in the scriptures. So we're in that time, all right? We're in that time to where the Lord's prophecies are manifesting, all right? And um, so I want to read this that caught my attention on the Metro um, news web website. And it says World War Three has already begun, and this is from yesterday. Claims Russian state TV with threat to, with, with a threat to NATO. Ooh. All right, and that's scriptural. You know, um, I was reading the scripture earlier. I think it was Revelations um, thirteen, with the establishment of the beast and how. The Lord was going to raise up Russia against the beast, the NATO, right? And bring it down at the end of this man's uh, system. So let's read it. It says here, let's take this uh, real quick. All right, it says, um, one of Putin's top propagandist has said World War Three has begun. You know, and a world war goes beyond a regional war. You see? There's, this is going to be a world war to where all the nations get involved and it's fought in different different regions um, by world or, or, or should I say uh, countries. All right? That's how it became a world war with uh, World War One and World War Two. All right, World War One in 1914 to 1918. Uh, All right, with uh, Kaiser Wilhelm and uh, World War Two from around 1938 all the way to 1945 with Hitler. All right, and the establishment of the nuclear age with with uh, with America, the whore being becoming the spearhead for NATO, and Russia becoming the adversary to um, America. All right, with the establishment of their nuclear arsenal as well, setting the stage for um, the, these end time events. So it says here one of Putin's top propagandist has said World War Three has begun and Russia will now demilitarize NATO. So they're going to start breaking down NATO, man. Basically, basically um, demilitarizing NATO in that region first over there in Ukraine. All right. That's what's about to happen, man. He may announce it and he may, he may not. Uh, Putin. Russian state TV anchor Olga... <laughs> Skabieva claimed Moscow's special military operation in Ukraine was now over. Ain't that something? So what's today? Wednesday, June 1st. And they saying the operation over there in Ukraine is, is over. Like they did their job. Allegedly. On her Razia 1 show, on her show, 
She then said the West supply of weapons to Zelensky's troops meant it was now a global conflict. See, now it, become, it has become a world war. All right. In that sense, that America's got, America has gotten involved and the NATO allies have gotten involved. Right, especially over there in Europe. And they, they're also going to war with Russia economically. It's time to admit, perhaps, that Russia's special operation in Ukraine is now over. Uh, Scabby, <laughs> Scabieva uh, said, in the sense that a real war has started. Mm. Not a proxy war, but a real war is starting. So we had to be we had the precipice, the beginning of it. World War Three. Mm. Kyle Langley Alba Shimel Shah. World War Three. We are being forced to demilitarize not just Ukraine, but NATO as a whole. Why am I talking about this? It was not only smirk MR MLRS with cluster munitions that struck the Donets. The strikes were carried out with American M777 howitzers. So they saying America has gotten involved into the war, man. So it's becoming a hot war now. All right, World War Three. So I'm gonna get a couple of precepts. All right. Jeremiah 49 and 20, Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he have taken against Edom and America's modern day Edom and his purposes that he have purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. All right. And today, spiritually, is, Teman is American, but it starts with them as Germans over there in Europe. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, man. So the least of the flock of these Nazis, that's what. That's what who's over there in um, Ukraine, a bunch of Nazis, and they they're drawn. They're, the least of the flock are drawing uh, Russia into the war, and drawing America into the war now. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them, man. All right. So um, this is Matthew twenty four and six, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. All right. So this. We're hearing about wars happening with Russia, Ukraine, over there in, in the east with uh, Palestinians and Israel, They're drawing out America into that area as well with India and China and Taiwan as a proxy, being pulling China and America into war. This is all the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And he shall hear, and ye shall hear of wars. And rumors of war. So this is another rumor of war. That World War Three has already started. Which I agree. It's just um, the beginning of it. And the climax is going to be the destruction of uh, the daughter of Babylon. All right, the U.S. See that ye be not troubled. All right, so don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, man. The end is not yet. It's according to prophecy. So it's going to be proxy wars. Going, to, we already entered the nuclear age after World War II. Now they, they're brandishing their weapons. The, the Lord said the short, the sword, is furbished. All right, and now, um, everybody's showing their weapons. Everybody choosing their sides, and ultimately, nuclear war is going to be um, announced at some point. Russia already said it. This war is going to be nuclear, and they're testing all their nuclear weapons as a deterrent to its adversaries. So, um, once that gets announced, they're going to start using tactical nukes. You know, this is Mark 13 and 28. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. All right. So you can judge by the, the um, 
you know, the plants or the trees to tell when the weather's changing, all right, just like when it's springtime. But you know that summer is not, all right, the heat. So ye, so ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at hand, right? Why? Because he said what? Uh, let me get this real quick. All right. So when you're seeing the prophecy start to come to pass, you know that the end is close. And Yahweh Shai is at the door. Habakkuk 2 and uh, 3. For the vision, these prophecies, all right, is yet for an appointed time. Right? The Lord has an appointed time for it, like right now. But at the end, it shall speak. See, we're at the end. And now the prophecies are speaking. They're showing themselves like fruit that's, that's budding on a tree. And not lie. All right, you're going to know that these these scriptures, the Lord spoke the truth, man. Everything has, has come to pass. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. What's that? World War III and the, and the deliverance of Israel and the judgment of two-thirds and these heathens, all right, to destruction. So, um, all right, so let's go back to the parable. And the parable is basically a mystery or a simile or a riddle. Mark 13 and 28. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. All right, just like the fig tree, they turn green in the springtime. And then you know that summer is, is uh, is, is not just like this the coming of the son of man Yahweh Shai or when the prophecies come to pass when her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves ye know that summer is not or the kingdom really the judgments so ye in like manner when ye shall see these things come to pass know that it is nigh even at the doors all right world war three as well verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all things be done. So if we were if you were born in um fifty AD or so and you heard the teachings of Paul and Peter, or around thirty AD and you heard the teachings of Yahweh and he was telling you about those prophecies of those times and future prophecies. All right. Um, that generation didn't pass until all those things were fulfilled. Just like now, in, in this time, when you see the end time prophecy spoken of in the book of Revelations come to pass, you know that that, that summer is not, that Yahweh Shai, the kingdom was at hand. All right, in the judgments. So, this generation shall not pass till all the prophecies be fulfilled. Okay. Heaven and earth shall pass away. See, Esau's rulership is going to pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Okay? And, and his word is ultimately the truth. All right? And Yahweh shall as well. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So it's set for an appointed time. All in the Father's will. And nobody knows nobody knows that moment to where he's gonna send you Yahweh Shai. But the prophecies can give us a signal that we're in that time period. And to be ready. Take ye heed, watch and pray. Alright, so we take heed and we watch and we pray. You know. For ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. Who left his house and gave authority uh, to his uh, servants, and the servants represent the prophets, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the, the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. We don't know when he's going to show up, but we know according to the prophecies that. Certain certain prophecies had to play out, and then 
the Lord is going to bring his will upon this earth. All right. His judgment. Watch ye therefore. All right. So lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. See, that's what we're watching. You know, some some people are watching in different watches of the night, in the morning, in the nighttime, in the evening. And, you know, and uh, got the cock crowing. But you never know when the Lord's going to show up. So that's why you, we do our best. He said, uh, give diligence to make that calling in an election sure. All right. So this thing is going to come on it unexpectedly. That's why they like yo. We in, we, we, World War Three has begun, but you don't see them talking about it on the on the major news or putting it out there. You know, they, it's going to come as a um, as a thief in the night. Even though we're telling people about it, they're still not going to be able to get it. Second Ezra 16 and 21, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth. See, everybody living it up. You know, you watch all these celebrities like Fat Joe and DJ Khaled and P. Diddy. They, you can tell they're living in spiritual Egypt right now, man. In the lap of luxury. Do change the name to love. The victual shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Sword. See, part of that sword is this war. Right? And martial law. And death. And famine. And great confusion. So the famine that can happen with the droughts that's happening. Um, and great confusion, man. Especially in the land of Babylon, it's a place of confusion. So many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of the famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So it's letting you know in order that the famine is coming first, the economic collapse, or the lack of food, the hyperinflation, and that and those that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the sword represents the missiles. This is First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So we know perfectly through faith that the day of the Lord can happen at any moment. You know, it can happen next month. It can happen the month after, any time this year. They're saying that uh, the hyperinflation or the, the dollar crash could happen by the end of the year. Possibly, you know, allegedly, possibly. So that can bring what? In, in um, high food prices. And then you have the drought. Um, they said they have 10 weeks left, allegedly, of wheat on the earth. All right. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, so cometh as a thief in the night, right? And the day of the Lord is, is darkness and not light. He's coming to bring fire, He's coming to send fire upon the earth. You know, the, the matter of fact, let's get that. Malachi 4 and 1, For behold, the day cometh, say that day, the day of the Lord, that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. So even two-thirds of our people. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, man. But unto you that fear my name, the name of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Shai, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings and his chariots. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, meaning being uh, micromanaged, you know, individually taken care of by the holy angels. And the top angel, Yahweh Shai, and the father, Yahweh. So this is going to happen, man. All right? So that's the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord, what? First Thessalonians 5 and 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, you see, 
everybody in their comfort zone, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right, so none of these heathens or anybody that's set up to be destroyed here, they're not going to escape in two-thirds. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So everybody that's dwelling in darkness are going to be destroyed here. All right. And ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So to be sleep means to miss the opportunity that's being pre presented to you. Like somebody that's dead or unresponsive or incoherent. All right, and watch and be sober means to be patient and to be um, to have your head on the swivel. All right, not being drunken with the philosophies and the um, the politics of this world. Okay, for they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet and the hope of salvation. See, we're hoping for salvation. For Yahweh have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yahweh Shai. In the midst of these wars, man. In 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to come unexpectedly, man. See, that's why they're saying this war has already started. So by the time anybody realizes it, they're going to be at the end of the, of the climax of the war. That's when they're going to start seeing it. Like, oh, man. You know? They shall be, uh, you know, have to, what terrible fear going to take hold of the people. And the women that have turned their back on the men of the Lord, is that she going to, those women going to see it? You know? And the men going to see it as well. Second Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And the which the heavens shall pass away. And he's coming to take back. It's going to be like a stick up. And the Lord's showing up to take back his jewels. His, his elect. Like a, like a pirate. You know what you call the captain of the sea. The, the heavens. The Shemayim. It says what? The heavens sh shall pass away with a great noise, as we just read in Malachi. All right? With a great noise, that's going to be them explosions. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up, right? So the judgment day is going to come unexpectedly. So the people are going to be caught off guard. They're going to think themselves in good case, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, the breach is going to break. The walls are going to fall in this place. And um, all hell going to break loose, which is doing now. And leading up to the ultimate full destruction upon this whole land. By Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are you to be in all holy conversations and godliness, so in all your actions, even in your household? You know, the... Um, and in the camps, in your daily life, and in this truth, what person, talk, type of person should we be in all our actions? You know, in our spiritual walk, we should be uh, walking in the footsteps of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, looking for, right, looking for it and hastening. I always said, watch, hastening. How do you hasten it? Hasten the day, according to Revelation seven. He said, uh, scriptures say, the Lord is holding back the winds until the 144,000 and the one-third is um, sealed. So our job is to go around and teach each, each other to the belief in Yahweh B'Shem Yahweh Shai, thus sealing the elect. So that's how you hasten the day. Each one, reach one, teach one. The quicker we do that, and enhance each other in the faith and according to, to the will of the Lord. One man water, another, one man planteth, another man water, 
but the most high to give the increase. All right. So we were looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, day of Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So that everything that they built up in this place is all going to melt, turn into lava. Thus you're going to have a lake of fire. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, see, the elect, according to the Lord's promise that he gave to Abraham and to Yahweh Shai, and that Yahweh Shai gave to his, his elect and disciples, we're looking for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. You see that? Not that he's going to destroy the whole earth, but it's going to seem like that. But you know, this is, this is a targeted judgment a, a sacrifice in Basra that the Lord has, man, upon this place. And specific people and type of people that the Lord is going to judge called the wicked. All right? So we're looking for a, a new heaven and new earth, and the best cleansing agent is fire. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. All right, so that's how you we, we get clean by doing this work. And the reward is that the Lord is going to make us perfect. Second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. That's, that goes with this generation shall not pass until the signs be, prophecies be fulfilled, basically. All right, so we're seeing it. They talking about World War Three, not World War One, not World War Two. You know, not the establishment of America, the independent war. No, this is World War Three, and that's the last war when the Lord said He's going to return. All right, this is um, Revelations eleven and twelve, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, "Come up hither." See that. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And this is the elect getting taken up into the chariots. And their enemies beheld them. And the same hour, that same time period, <clears throat> that same hour, it's going to be quick, was there a great earthquake. That's, that's when the mist was hitting the earth. And the tenth part of the city fell, meaning all of this place is going to fall. America's broken up into ten FEMA zones, all right? And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. That means an innumerable number of people are going to be destroyed. But it's going to be a complete number that the Lord has chosen. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe that comes quickly. All right? So that's it, man, right there. That's going to be the third war. Third world war. It's, it's going to be uh, start off with nukes flying. All right, they're at war now, but the the climax is going to be them nukes getting shot off on this place. Two hundred million by ICBM uh, warheads going to hit this place. So we're measuring the time diligently in itself with the scriptures. All right. Second Ezra nine and one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." And when thou see see as part of the signs past which I told thee before, see, that way say learn the parable of a fig tree. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the Lord is visiting the earth with judgment. All right. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the peoples, there's earthquakes all over the earth in diverse places and uproars and other people and rumors of wars then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning right because we're in a full world collapse that's happening of a whole fiat currency system not just here in Babylon but it's going to be around the whole world because they're moving from the fiat paper money to the digital system all right so there's going to be a judgment upon the whole world. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of places destroyed, but ultimately, 
ultimately, the main focus of the Lord is going to be on this place, America, the great city. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, man, even from the beginning of time. Sheesh. That's prophecy. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end. See? We had the entering in of our judgment. Now we have the out, the outro of our judgment, which is going to be ju uh, judgment to death upon the two-thirds and a judgment to life upon the elect to start off the new beginning, which will have no end, all right, which will be the kingdom. And the end is manifest. See, the end is manifest. See, the Lord intervenes and he speaks it, then it comes to pass. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works as that's coming to slavery and such. And, and, uh, and endings and effects and signs, man. Okay, spiritual power, like, uh, special effects like when we came out of Egypt or out of, out of Sodom and Gomorrah alright um, see the Lord will lead us into a place and then bring us out with power and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby you have believed man see we believe We've been warning people. They're like, no, that ain't happening. That's going to, you know, it's not going to happen in these times. <clears throat> See, they're not watching. They're not trusting the spirit of truth. But the ones that believe, you shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see the Lord's salvation in his land and within his borders. For It says, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So that means you were with the Lord from the beginning, man, chosen to be the first fruits into his kingdom. And through his power, he has intervened and made it this way in the end of time, in the end of the ages of the, um, the wicked upon the earth. And the Lord has separated the righteous unto himself that he promised from the beginning. This is Revelation 8. No, 8 and uh, 11. Nope. I'll start from... Um, I'm going to go from here to get to the point. 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, right? Verse 10. And the, th and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. See, they, that's what it said. The star is going to fall. It's talking about these missiles, or ICBM missiles. Giant missiles. And Russia has the... Russia just brandished the world's most heaviest missile, 400,000 pounds, man, called the Sarmat II. It says a burning as it were a lamp, I mean an intercontinental ballistic missile going out of space and coming back into space. And they also have some that, that don't need to go out of space anymore, but that can go around any type of object that's in its way, called the Invincible Missile um, over there in Russia. The vanguard. It says, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the waters and upon the fountains of waters, man. So out there in the ocean, and it's going to, the third part today represents the wicked, and the focus of that would be America, all right? So wherever their ships are at, wherever, and, and, um, and over here, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. All right, wormwood represents um, basically poison. All right, so the waters are going to be a radiation of poison from these missiles. There's going to be tsunamis and everything. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the water. So people drinking the waters, and also um, uh, the wars that's going to be happening out there. With the aircraft carriers, they they got plans for that. The EMPs, 
because they were bitter, all right? So all the waters, anybody would be able to drink the water in the areas of the earth, certain areas in the midst of this war. Because it's going to be fuel, oil, uh, nuclear radiation. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise, man. So part of the, um, basically the climax of the day, which would be at noon, all right? Um, early in the morning, it's still going to be dark, like nighttime. And at night, you're not going to be able to see the moon because of the nuclear fallout. All right? And the smoke. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. That's World War Three. By reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound, man. All right? All right, so I'm going to do this, Revelation 9 and 12, because this is prophecy, and it's going to happen. The Lord spoke it, uh, also according to Revelation 1. Let me get that real quick. Uh, right here, Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation to the revealing of Yahweh Shai Mashiach from Yahweh, or which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. It's going to be short to the Lord because a thousand years is as a day to him. And it, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai of all the things that he saw, man. All right? So let's get it. Revelation 9 and 12. Ended with this. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And we're in the time of that third woe. 